today we are going to show you some tips and tricks that I've learned in Windows Movie Maker to make the process easy. Let's go over a few tips. First thing, let's find a program in the computer so we can play with it. You know, just any old program so we can show you how to load a program just simply by just clicking and mashing a button. I'm just going to pick anything here. Just pick something just to show you and hit OK. And there we go. Now that we got the program open, I want you to notice the uh, left side where it's showing you a, a display of what you open. And on the right side, you see the volume and the uh, audio file. That's the audio file. It's showing you the audio. Down at the bottom, you can slide it for smaller or slide it the other way for wider. It's when you edit an audio, you want it as big as you can. But when you're moving files around, move it smaller. If we go back to the top and click the edit tool. We notice that on the Windows 8.1, it have a video stabilizer most of the other programs don't have that so you only see that on the Windows 8.1 so let's do that and it will show see how much stabler the video is by the stabilizer stabilizing the video now let's show you how to use the split tool split tool is used to remove unwanted files straighten up shaky video anything else that is making your video not look professional. The split tool is very useful and will be used a lot in the Windows program. Windows also have a feature called Transition. Transition feature makes your videos look better by transition from one frame to the next. And each one of those will give you a preview of how the transition works or how it will look. Choose the transition that best suits you and what you like. Also after doing a transition you can click transition all and the same transition will be put on all where you got to split it on your video making it much easier than to do it one by one unless you want to do it separate different transition you have to do it one by one. Don't be scared to make a mistake because you always have a back button that you can press over here and everything will go back. According to how many times you press it, it'll go back to the latest position that you had before you may edit or remove something. Now let's go into voice mode or record narration as they call it. Let's press the red button and your voice will begin to record. Most laptops have a built-in mic. And then you just save it and click save and then your voice will come directly over the thing just the way I'm doing it right now. Here's why I show you how to control the volume on your uh, on your video too. You can press it forward and mute it. Take the volume out of the uh, video itself and just leave the narration, add music, anything you want to add to it. But this is the way you do it. You turn it back to the left put it all the way to mute, that'll take all the video out that is highlighted, the one that's highlighted, it will not take out the video that comes up next, that's from the next split, you have to do each one separately, I mean the video audio, if you like to edit any of your audio, make sure that your audio file is highlighted in the orange pink look there, highlight your audio file that's in brown there and then you can edit that by highlighting it then click edit and the cut and you can right click and delete that part right here remove it and then you got your audio voiceover you can also edit that as well in some words you make a mistake now let's add audio. You go down to the audio, find the audio that you've downloaded. I usually go to YouTube and it goes in my download folder. Some of the free music that won't get you a, a click on your YouTube music. Make sure you give them credit for it. And the audio file with the music comes up in green. 
That's how you deafen, uh, that's how you tell the difference between your voiceover and your music. And if I want to edit or cut my music, I place it where I want to. I usually use this song as a theme, but I cut it. I like the green, cut it, and then right click the same way I did up. make your music fade in and fade out. Drop it down on the bottom. I usually like the medium. Fade in and fade out. That works great for me. Sometimes you may want to put your voice over in a different place. You can do that by clicking on it and dragging the narration file down and drag it to the point where you want it to start. That way you won't have to record it over. You can just put it at a position that you wish for it to be. Now we got all these choices to upload. I can go directly to YouTube, choose what video format, how big I want the file, how small, how clear, anywhere from 920 to 1080, which is high definition, 1280 to 720. And then it asked me for my password, and it asked me for some few more things after I go here. And this will dial, download, save, and upload directly to YouTube, which is a convenient feature. But before you upload, make sure you do all your credits. Put in the credits if you use music from someone else that wasn't yours. It's nice people know. Put in your title. Your title. You can resize the text. Put it in here. It's a tell how long that text uh, be on or not, and how long is the transition that that text is going to be, and then the uh, and it will tell you exactly what you need to do for putting up your text and giving people credit where credit is due.